Sarah here. Welcome to my YouTube channel and uh, today I'm just going to tell you a little bit about what I've been up to the last couple of weeks. I've been really busy as usual. I am still working on my beginner watercolor class course uh, over on my Podia site. Make sure that you're signed up to my newsletter so you get the updates on that and I'm going to release it. I'm hoping, I mean I'm working very hard at <laughs> making it happen this summer. Hopefully by July but I can't guarantee it. It's just life gets in the way, but it's coming. I'm working on it. And I've also been uh, continuing working in my bullet journal. And last week I took a free class with uh, Louise Fletcher. She's a British artist. She's an abstract artist. And she uh, puts on a taster course. She calls it Find Your Joy. And I did all the exercises. So I have that to share with you. And then I want to end this video with a little watercolor demo. We're going to paint a fun bit bear. That's my plan. So I'm going to put the minute stamp below in case you don't want to see my studio updates and just want to get straight to the demo. So that's what's coming up. I'm going to use my good camera for, for that as usual with my good lighting. And I got a new table here and I can just show you. Look at this puppy. It goes up and down. Let me see if I can so here you can see, look at that. So now I can stand up working or I can sit down working, whatever I like to do. It's so cool. So I think my studio is complete now. So here we are. I'd like to organize a little bit because I have too many art supplies. The bane, I think, of most artists. So let's get going. We're going to turn the camera down so that you can see what I'm doing. So first, let's start with where I left off with my little planner thing. So I still, you know, have my index and I'm up to a page past 107 so you can see I'm getting pretty close to uh, the end these planners they don't last a whole year and I have ordered a new one and I wanted to get the same size but I can't find any in this little bit bigger size so I'll just have to go with a A5 I guess that's okay and I'm still doing my tracking YouTube is growing slowly but surely and so is uh, Instagram grew a little bit. Facebook stays the same. I don't do much there. Skillshare is growing, which I'm happy with. And Podia is also growing, but not slowly because I haven't uploaded new classes because I'm still working on this uh, beginner course that I am, you know, in the middle of editing. And MailChimp stays around the same. I did one hike. I haven't been kayaking yet, but I do have a little adventure schedule for next week. I really, that's my biggest struggle I'm finding when I look at my goals for the for the year, personal goals, home and garden goals and wish, wishes. I I worked very hard in the garden this last week, probably too hard, because, and I, I went on a little bit of a longer walk with a friend of mine now that, you know, we are pretty much all my friends are vaccinated, and I kind of hang around vaccinated people, so it's so nice that we can walk outside and uh, not have to wear a mask. And I think I overdid it a little bit. I think I haven't told you that, you know, I went to, finally went to my doctor, and, you know, I have a new right knee in my future, which I'm not looking forward to. But that is hampering my walking a little bit and I did a longer walk and then I paid the price all week also because I worked so hard in the garden and was logging you know bags of dirt around and stuff not ideal and then get this then we got two nights of hard you know hard frost but you know 25 degrees and it killed a bunch of my plants that's gardening for you up here in trucking almost 6,000 feet ain't easy all right so I think I left up here sometime in April and you can see I'm I'm keeping up my bullet journal and it is helping me keep more on track I definitely feel that I'm still using the tada once in a while whenever I spend time in Ogden with my daughter and son-in-law and my two little granddaughters Sophia and Lily I don't keep a daily log I just keep like a journal and then we got into May so have the May my weekly goals and there you can see another tada that means tada is you know sometimes I don't get anything or I do get stuff done, but I don't get everything done that I had originally planned. But then I get a lot of other stuff done and it helps me feel better about my day. Then you don't have that feeling that you spend the whole day doing nothing, which is usually for most of us not true. It's just maybe 
we didn't do what we had set out to do that day. That happens to me a lot. But anyway, and you know, I do my usual decorations and I like to throw in a little bit of that washi tape with the red and white. And here I need to get some more decorations in. And I do that once in a while when I feel, you know, mainly in the morning with my morning coffee, when I just, you know, sometimes I have these mornings where, you know, my, I have brain fog and then I just need to just sit and doodle a little bit. Oops, and here I need to put the, I like to put black lines around my little, you know, I usually do that every morning. I do at least the stars and the hearts. I'm going to finish that off. But anyway, that was May. Went so quickly. Did some little lemons and strawberries. And you can see a lot of it, you know, garden inspiration. And then I felt like doing some cactus. And then here we are, June. Put all my scheduled things in. I did that Find Your Joy, Finding Your Joy workshop with uh, Louise Fletcher. I'm gonna go through. I'm gonna show you what I did in that one. And then it says finished large hydrangea painting. That one is still lying on the bed in the guest room. Finished beginner course. Still working on it. Go on adventures. I'm going on one adventure next week. It's so hard. You can hardly book anything anywhere. I wanted to go camping. Now that I have found out how to trick my car into thinking that the back hatch is closed so it doesn't drain the battery when I use my car camping tent. I'm going to plug in a picture here so you can see what it looks like. I tried it once last year and I had to call for somebody to come and you know give me a boost for the battery because the battery is completely dead. So I learned the hard way that because I have an automated hatch on my Subaru Outback 2019 it drains the battery. But I've been scouring the internet and somebody came up with a solution that I then build on to to work with my car so hopefully that works so I have a one night campsite up in Northern California and I think I'll be spending two nights there I had originally thought I'd like to camp either around Fallen Leaf Lake or Lake Tahoe and everything is booked I can do that probably maybe in the fall if I plan in advance but you know I like to be more spur of the moment so at least I'm doing that and then you know take time for workshop for the first week organize studio I did that after. I just did that yesterday actually because it was a huge mess. I couldn't do anything in here. And then, you know, just June is moving along. A lot of it was garden stuff that I did. I got to here. Saturday, June 12th. Here's a little bear. We're going to paint this little guy. How fun is that? Because it's going to be loose. Anyway, that's it for my bullet journal. I'm going to just find all the stuff I did in the Find Your Joy taster course with Louise Fletcher and show you all the stuff I did. That was a little bit of the studio updates. And now let's paint this little bear and it'll be in a loose interpretation. And I want to throw in some little, you know, he or she is lying in the grass and there's going to be, it'll be wildflowers and stuff. It's just going to be very, very loose. That's my idea with this one. So grab your paints and come paint with me. So let's paint a little bear. Here is my tracing on a five by seven, 300 pound cold pressed Arches watercolor paper. You can use whatever size you like and whatever paper you like. I already got my colors out. I got French ultramarine blue. I got burnt Shenna. I got some cobalt blue. I got some transparent yellow and I got a little bit of the permanent rose here. I'm using my standard palette. And if you're curious, you can look at the video where I talk about the colors that I chose for my 2000. 2021 palette and you can go take a look there. I'm using spray bottle. I'm using my two containers of water and I used this pencil. It's uh, Papermate Sharp Writer number two. I, I like these here. And then I have my kneaded eraser and I have my little masking fluid marker PBO and I just masked out a little bit 
on the eyes and a little highlight on the nose. And if you don't have a marker like this, don't worry about it. And you don't even have to mask out. It's totally doable without. And I always like to just pick up a little bit of the extra graphite before I start painting. It's just a little obsession I have, I guess. I don't personally like to see too many pencil lines in my watercolors. Some artists love to see the lines. So, you know, it's per personal preference, like so many things. You don't have to use the same colors as me. You don't have to use the same brushes as me. I just picked these here. I, I'm probably not even gonna use all of them. I have a number eight round, I have a number 12 round, and then I have my big number 30 round, and then I have a number six liner brush, and I have this here, it's a number three Princeton Heritage, and I have my beloved dagger brush, half inch dagger. I like that one a lot. As if you have watched my videos, you know that. All right, so I'm gonna go with my big old number 30 brush. And the first thing I'm going to do is, I'm just gonna put some water around my bear. And we are remembering, we wanna keep this loose. And as you know, I always turn my paper around. Two reasons, first of all, so I don't have to hold my hand in some awkward position. Second of all, so that I don't have my hand right over what I'm doing so you can't see it. And it's just easier that way. And I know some people find it really annoying that I do that when I do my demos, but I'm sorry, that's how I paint. So that's that's the only way I can do it is the way, you know, I'm showing you here. So I think we're just gonna do it like this. I'm gonna wait with uh, in front of the bear here. I think I wanna wait with that. And I'm gonna stick with my big old brush because I'm just gonna put a little bit of the cobalt blue in here just for a little color like this we can go down to the a little bit further down so you can see because I put all that water on you know it's staying pretty light and that's what I want the bear is you know the focal area especially his face so I made sure I didn't have the face in the smack dack in the middle it's kind of up here it's a good spot not too much out on the side, but I think that works composition wise. We always got to think a little bit about that. Like here, there we go. That's a good beginning. Then let's take maybe our liner brush, or you could also take your number eight or whatever brush you, you have. And I think I want to put in down here, I want to start putting in a little bit, and maybe also some here little bit of French ultramarine blue, just like that. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of my yellow in and just here and there and there and here. You know, I wanna get a little bit of green around the bear because, you know, he or she is lying down in the grasses. And a little bit more here. And put a little bit of blue in there. And see, I want this very loose feeling. We're not gonna, you know, paint particular flowers or particular vegetation or anything like that. It's gonna keep it nice and loose. That's my goal, so I'm gonna try and stick to that as much as I can. Keep like here. I think that's good. Okay, and I can also just, you know, get a little bit of splatter on there, water, just water. Just holding my hand over, just so I get a maybe a little bit of run backs or whatever. That'll be fine. And if this ends up being too bright, we can deal with it later. All right, that was easy. That's most of the background. And now we are going to paint the bear. I think I'll use my number eight brush for that. And I'm going to put some water around his little face and his ears. And my background is not completely dry yet, so I am probably going to get a little bit of bleeding. And I'm good with that because, you know, we want to say fur, so we don't want to have too many hard lines. So I'm just going to start like that. And then I'm going to use some of my burnt sienna. Start out with that. And some places I, I don't mind that it, it hits, you know, into the into the blue of the sky. I, I, I don't mind a little bit of that run back and if it's too much you just take a little tissue, your Kleenex, and pick it up. It's gonna go with some more of that. See now I have a little bit more pigment on and not so much water. 
and just get that on. And I want to keep it kind of light around his his nose. It's going to be the lightest part. His, his snout, I guess it's called on a bear. It's going to be the lightest part. So here we are, and we're just going to put some more in. Now I'm just going to dab it in here and there, there and here. And I'm just right now. I'm just sticking with my burnt shinna, and I'm just dabbing it in. And now I'm down in the bigger part. I want a bigger brush. I don't want to fiddle around with it too much because that's then it you know ends up not being loose the way I want it. So let's just get that. And here we are. And. And now I'm just going to, see it's dry down here, so I'm just going to pull it down like this so I get kind of uneven. Because then I want to have some of the grasses and the flowers and stuff. They're going to be peeking up through here. He's lying down here in some tall grasses and wildflowers. And now I'm going to go in. I had, um, I put a little bit of... Uh, my French ultramarine blue one, and now I want to go in and make some a little bit darker areas. And so I still had some of the of the burnt sienna on. So I'm just going in and just dabbing that in here and there, there and here. Now here it bled too much, so I'm going to pick that up. See how you can just pick that up. It's no big deal. And the same here. There. Now put some more burnt shinna and with some of the French ultramarine blue so I get a little bit of a darker brown. And his face a little bit darker here. And he's going to be really dark underneath his snout here. And I think we have our light there. Dab in a little bit more on his ears. There. And then down here. And I think it bled maybe a little bit more than I'd like here. So just pick that up. There. And get some more darkness on. And then go down like this. Really dark here. There. And see, it's beginning to dry here, so put a little bit more water on just so that we don't get any hard lines in there. Don't really want that. And again, a little bit darker down here. And before I get too much of a dry um, hard line here, I just want to pull that color out so we get that little bit of a lighter snout but we still have some softness so just like that and then we'll go in and fine tune that later and now it's time for us to go in and then let's put some yellow in here first from the bottom here and uh, blend it in with the foreground you have there and just you will see it go from the bottom up just like this, like that. And then we're going to take some of our French ultramarine blue and we're going to go in and do something like this. And you continue out here so you know that your foreground is, you know, goes together. Hope that makes sense. And a little bit more down here because you know we want it ending up more or less green. And now is the time, rinse out of our brush, take the water off, and let's go in and get a little bit of that pink. And we'll put that in, you know, little bear his and all those wildflowers. He's just having a grand old time. I think it's a he, I don't know. We can't tell yet until we're done painting it. And then I want to have a little bit more dark down here. So I've dipped into my French ultramarine blue with a dirty brush. That's what I did. So here we are. 
Okay, and there's a little bit of sparkle there. I'm good with that. And I think I'll just leave it like that for now. And then I am going to, you know, make my brush thirsty and just go in and pick up a little bit around here. That line we have around his snout. This is what's going to really make it is once we put the snout and the uh, eyes in. So I'm going to let it dry a little bit. And now I'm going to take maybe my number eight brush and I'm going to take some more burnt sienna and I'm going to put it in this puddle of my French ultramarine blue. Can you see it's kind of thick? When it's thick, it's going to stay darker and it's also not going to run as much. Of course, I still want to get in. We need to get something darker down here and we need to start, you know, putting a little bit, a little bit more shape on. It's a little bare. I mean, I don't... I want to keep it loose, but there's loose and then there's loose, right? So here I want to pick that up. And it's a little darker here in here. And definitely down here. And then it can also be darker down here. You know, his fur down here into the flowers. It's more in the shade, in a shadow. And there's like here the back of his body and again just fine-tune his little ears there and it's also a little darker right here and then I think there will also be a little bit of a darkness and before he's completely dry, I want to try and throw some salt on him. It's just an inspiration that came to me right now. So let's throw a little salt on and see what we get. I think that could be fun. And now we can also use, I have my credit card and I would like to use it to just scrape in some little texture here. Not too much, just a little bit. And I'm going to take my liner brush and just dab in a little bit more here while it's drying. So that's going to make us also probably get some run backs, which I'm kind of hoping for. I'm just looking for texture here. And let's just get a few little grasses in like that. And we can also get some sticking out like that. There, let's get a couple here. There, I think we're good. She said, and then she keeps, keeps going. Okay, I think we're gonna let that dry for now, and then we'll see what we end up with, and then we're gonna paint in just the snout and the eyes, and see what else needs to be fixed there. But right now, I'm just gonna let it dry, and hope that we end up with something useful. All right, I just used my credit card to get the salt off, and now I took my kneaded eraser, and let's take that little bit of masking fluid off that I put on. There we are. And then we need to put some little eyes on this guy. Just bring out the features a little bit. But eyes, let's do our eyes first. I'm gonna use homemade black by using some of my French ultramarine blue and put it in this dark mix I have here of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. That's, you know, part of the colors we already used. Bears don't have very big eyes. More like little beady eyes. I'm just putting a little bit of a circle around there and let's put a little bit around here. And I also want to put just a little bit more shadow in here. So I'm, I put a little bit of water on my brush and just put something dark on there. And I might do the same over here. And then just soften it out like that. Nice thing about both the French Ultramarine Blue and the Burnt Sienna is that they lift easily, so it's going to be easy for us to lift out some highlights as needed. And just trying to see if I can kind of give him a little bit of expression here. I don't think I want that white. Yeah. And 
like that. And then I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna give him more brownish eyes. So find my little puddle here. Might even go actually get myself some clean burnt shenna. Darken it up a little bit with what I had over there. So that was a little. And now we wanna remember, gotta keep a little white glint in his eyes so he doesn't look dead. Anytime you're painting something live, you gotta have that little white glint in their eyes. Otherwise you make them look really dead. And just put a little, takes a little bit of that away. And again here, a little bit of that. There we have that. And let's go and get his little nose. First we can do the nostrils. And then underneath here, put a little like that. And then a little color on, kind of like here, the bridge of his nose. And I'm just going little by little. And here, a little lighter there. And then I'm gonna get his little snout. Put a little bit of color on the bridge here. Bring the snout out. And then it's dark. side and then I think I probably need to wait for it to dry a little bit before I can finish that up and then you can see a little bit of his mouth down here it's dark and, and then it's dark underneath here Just give it a little bit more. And also his ears. So I'm just jumping around here and there and trying to put in some darks, some places where I feel it needs a little bit more pizzazz. And now we need to get that snap has to be and then it's it's dark like that and I'm just gonna do a little you know little furry marks not a hundred percent sold on this needs to be something a little lighter underneath here and the under this uh, the under the underside of his muscle or whatever it's called on a bear. It's a muscle. More than a snout. There, that's better. Can you see that? Now he's beginning to get a little bit more character like I want. It's all a matter of also having to wait a little bit, not jump the gun here. And in a little bit like that. There. And then I think here got a little dark. So you can't really see his eye. I use my tissue. And again I have to remember what I said. It's gonna be a loose interpretation, but I still want it to look like a bear. I think there's like a little darkness like right there. Mm -hmm. And then again, once it's dry enough, you need to get real dark in those nostrils. There. And I feel this eye here needs a little bit more. There. Lift out a little bit here. Something about this I am not so happy with. So 
I'm just tinkering away on that. And it's a fine line with the tinkering. There, like that better. And now we're just gonna have very thin black line here. That looks like a friendly bear to me. And I'm just gonna see if I can get rid of a couple of pencil lines I can see here. I think probably I should leave it alone, but can I? I'm feeling that right here should be a little bit of a darkness. Kind of like, you know, separating the, his, the back of his body a little bit. enough is enough. I think I want to leave them like that and call them done. And if you'd like to show me your bears, hashtag watercolor with Eva. So hashtag watercolor with Eva and post them on either Facebook or Instagram and that way I'll see them. So wishing you a happy painting and look forward to seeing you in another class very soon.